Hello, thanks for joining me. My name is John McCauley and I'm the Midwest Regional Sales Manager for the Ophir Photonics Group, representing the world's leading laser measurement equipment manufacturers, Ophir, Spiricon, and Photon, and now a division of the Newport Corporation. Beam profiling can be described as using a device such as a camera or a scanning slit to image a laser beam or a sample of the beam, interfacing that imaging device with a PC, and analyzing that image using beam analysis software. Oftentimes I think that some people can get overwhelmed with what they might think is a lot of time and energy to invest with the setup and use of an unfamiliar but useful piece of equipment. To help me with these questions and stigmas related to beam profiling, I traveled to beautiful Lake Geneva, Wisconsin to see a couple of good friends of mine at a company by the name of Metacoil, a division of RNL Spring Company. Their Metacoil division, an ISO 13485 certified company, is a highly specialized manufacturer of micro precision coiled and formed wire products for the medical device industry. Uh, I'm Joel Bryant. Um, I'm a production technician at Metacoil. Now with Joel's help, I want to show you just how simple the setup of a beam profiler can be. Another video that might be helpful with respect to the setup of Spiricon's beam gauge beam analysis software is on Ophir Spiricon's YouTube page and is entitled Getting Started with Beam Gauge. In this case, we are going to be profiling a single pulse fiber delivered ND YAG welding laser with a 100 millimeter focal length lens. The laser is integrated into a workstation with motorized X, Y, and Z stages, which will help with the setup. This system also has a secondary 633 nanometer red target laser, which will make the setup even easier. We will be setting up the beam profiler to analyze the primary laser's focus spot. First make sure you have all of your components. For this scenario we will be working with the Spiricon SP620U high resolution USB camera which is interfaced with a local PC running the beam gauge beam analysis software. Also we will be using the Spiricon LBS 300 attenuation system, a base and a stand. We will also show you how to integrate a thermal pile energy measurement sensor into the system and utilize a temporal pulse shape measurement system for a complete and comprehensive laser characterization package. Now let's assemble the system. In some cases we would remove the protective cover on the camera, but for this scenario we will be leaving an ND1 absorption filter installed on the camera's input aperture. Note here that the camera's chip is not protected by any cover glass, so take care as to not get any dust particles onto the camera. Next we will install the post onto the tapped quarter 20 hole on the bottom of the camera. At this point we will install the LBS 300 onto the front of the camera by screwing it into the C-mount threads at the aperture of the camera. When you have rotated the LBS 300 as much as you can go, back it off until the input aperture of the LBS 300 is perpendicular to the input beam. In this case we are working with a laser that has a vertical beam delivery so our LBS 300 will have an input aperture that is parallel with the table. At this point we will use the retainer ring on the LBS 300 to snug up the connection with the camera. Screw in our post holder into our base and affix our camera and the LBS 300 to the base. Now that the setup of the system is complete we are ready to place it into the laser system. But before we dive into that I want to pause a moment to talk about the concept of power density. Most of you watching this video are going to be familiar with this concept, but just in case you aren't, it is important that you understand the characteristics of the laser as it meets the beam profiler. Also, even though I'm talking about power density, realize that the concepts are the same when you talk about energy density on pulsed lasers. Here we have a representation of a typical laser system where the invisible laser light, represented here by a red outline, is focusing or converging out of a scan head to a focused spot and then diverging again before it stops at the table. The amount of power here and here are exactly the same. What has obviously changed is the power with respect to the unit area, or what is called the power density. 
power is expressed in watts, while the power density is expressed in watts per centimeter squared. This is important to understand because as the beam diameter decreases for the same amount of power, the power density increases exponentially. Around where the focus spot is, is where the laser is most useful for its intended purpose, but is also most damaging to any optics, power measurement equipment, or anything else that is put at the point in the beam path. If the laser you're working with is invisible, it is important to make a mental note of where your focus spot is so that you won't damage your beam characterization system. As we continue with the setup of the beam profiler, these next few steps should be followed very carefully as to not allow this damage to happen, especially if you are setting up your beam profiler with only the primary processing laser. As a rule, start conservatively and gradually increase the signal to the camera. Again, with this setup, we will use the laser system's visible target or alignment laser to align the X and Y positions on the table, as well as the Z height to get the beam profiler in the vicinity of the focus spot. Install a couple of ND filters into the LBS 300. The amount of filtering is not really that important at this point since the alignment laser is at such a low power and will not damage the camera. With only the alignment laser on, using a white card or piece of paper, do your best to center the beam onto the input aperture of the LBS 300. Ensure that your camera is interfaced with your PC via the USB cable. Now launch the beam gauge beam analysis software. Ensure that you have a connection with the camera and that you are viewing a live image from the camera. With a live camera, data is being written to beam gauge's buffer as indicated by the slide bar in the bottom right of the software. Starting with the laser's focusing lens as close to the LBS 300 as possible, slowly raise the laser away from the beam profiler. You should notice on beam gauge that the beam size is slowly decreasing as the beam comes into focus. When the beam is at its smallest diameter measurement, that is when you are close to the focus spot. Since the primary and secondary lasers operate at different wavelengths, the focal length may be different as well, but you are at least in the ballpark. Now that we are in the general vicinity of the primary laser's focus spot, we want to set up beam gauge to start capturing useful data. For this single pulse laser, we will use the SP620U camera's onboard photodiode to capture flashes of light from each pulse and trigger the camera. Once this feature is enabled, beam gauge will freeze as it awaits a pulse and then it will start to collect data. We will also use the 13.5% of peak beam diameter calculation algorithm to measure the size of the focus spot. And place that measurement on the 2D window for easy reference. Now, to take a conservative approach, on the LBS 300, set your ND filters at the highest combination, with the lighter of the two filters always closer to the laser and the heaviest always closer to the camera. Now, fire the primary laser into the beam profiler. Chances are the signal reaching the camera will be too weak with the heavy filters installed, so adjust the ND filters to a level where you can see an image through as much of the color band at the right of the screen as possible. Also, again, because you're not sure that you're at focus, tweak in your Z height until your beam diameter is at its smallest value to ensure that you are imaging the focus spot. Now that you are at the focus spot and ready to take data, to ensure that your measurements are as accurate as possible, utilize Beam Gauge's UltraCal tool, which analyzes the signals not coming from the laser beam and sets that as the baseline of your image. When UltraCal is complete, once again fire the laser and start to collect useful data. Real-time analysis is taking place, but data can also be saved at any time for offline analysis. In setting up the beam profiler without the use of an alignment laser, we will use the same general approach. Once the initial setup is complete, make a note of where your beam profiler is in the X and Y positions respective to the focusing lens, what distance your beam profiler is away from the focusing lens, and what ND filters you end up using, and future setup will be that much easier for you.
Starting with the laser's focusing lens as close to the LBS-300 as possible, begin to fire the laser and slowly raise the laser away from the beam profiler. As before, you should notice on beam gauge that the beam size is slowly decreasing as the beam comes into focus. During this time, adjustments may have to be made to the ND filters to either allow more of a signal to reach the camera or to keep from saturating the camera. Finally, when the beam is at its smallest diameter measurement, that is when you are at the focus spot. Beam gauge also has the ability to take an input from a power or energy measurement system and apply those readings real time as the beam profile is being taken. We can also supply a system that measures the temporal shape of the laser's pulses so that power or energy, spatial profile, and temporal profile measurements can be taken simultaneously with what is a comprehensive and complete laser measurement system. Again, thanks for watching. As always, I as well as my colleagues are available at any time to help answer any additional questions that you might have about beam profiling or about Ophir, Spiracon, and Photon beam profiling products.